Hello and welcome to Solve Papers channel. In this video, I will be solving a mathematics paper. I will be solving a mathematics paper from Cambridge uh, Primary Checkpoint. This is paper 1 of October 2019. Um, if you have not already subscribed to my channel, please click the subscribe button below and hit the bell icon. This way you will be sure to be notified every time I upload uh, the videos that I'm currently working on. Without further ado, let's begin. Number one, here is the timetable of a morning of our sports activities. Um, we have um, a table here heading uh, time and activity. We have four activities here, swimming, tennis, sailing and football with break occurring at 10.45 that you can see right there. Uh, the question is, what is happening at 10.15? Uh, um, at 10.15, um, that is the activity that is ongoing at 10.15 um, should be the activity between uh, 9.30 and 9.45 because 9.30 and 9.45 um, we have uh, tennis at break and 10.15 is uh, in between here 10.45 uh, and 9.30 and therefore the activities that is going on at 10.15 is tennis. So at 10.15 uh, we have uh, tennis and therefore the correct answer is tennis activity going on at 10.15. Question number two. Here are four units of length. We have centimeters. Right there, we have kilometers, we have millimeters, and we have meters. Um, choose the best unit for each measurement. For each measurement, you must use each unit only once, right? Now, um, the length of a swimming pool. The length of a swimming pool um, is usually given in meters. Of course, you cannot give length of swimming pool in centimeters. Centimeters is quite, um, and millimeters are small uh, measurements when you compare the length of a swimming pool. Uh, of course, um, you know that the standard um, uh, swimming pools, uh, the length is usually 25 meters or 50 meters. Next, the distance between two towns. Distance between two towns, like now, um, if you're living in like for example in UK, um, the distance between any two given towns, like uh, distance between London and uh, whichever other town you uh, desire. Uh, so the distance between towns is usually given in kilometers, kilometers. Of course K is um, uh, kilo and then M is meters. Uh, next, the length of a newborn uh, baby. Of course, uh, the length of a newborn baby uh, this should be in centimeters, cannot be in kilometers, neither can it be in meters, uh, nor millimeters. The length of a finger uh, nail, uh, of course this is now going to be in centimeters. Um, that is the answer to that. Number three, these nets will fold to make a 3D uh, shapes. Join each net to the name of the 3D shape it makes. Uh, firstly, we have um, a 3D shape which has got uh, the hands. So this shape has got six sides. We have one, two, three, four, five, six. So exa. So basically, you look at what um, sides is start with the word exa, and you can see right there the side will be uh, basically hexagonal. Draw a line to hexagonal right there. The next shape um, will be um, have four sides, one, two, three, four. In the uh, the shape of a triangle, therefore that should be tetra. Uh, so draw a line from there to tetrahedra. Um, the next net will have the sides one, two three, four, and five, six, a six-sided uh, net. 
uh, this net will give us um, you can see it has got a square a uh, rectangular um, uh, sides of the net that should be able to give us a cuboid of course then uh, lastly we have uh, this side here which uh, is which net is going to give us this net right here which is going to give us a square based pyramid right there before here are some digit cuts we have uh, digit 0, 2, 4, 6, and um, 8. Um, use three, three of these digits to make uh, these calculations uh, correct. Uh, we need three digits, uh, three digit cuts, uh, by which when we multiply, we get a um, product of 240. Therefore, to do that, we need to find um, the multiples of 240 of course start with the smallest digit which is the digit 2 right there and therefore you get 240 divided by 2 uh, 240 uh, divided by 2 gives us 120 120 um, divided by 2 will give us a uh, 60 so at least now we have um, uh, digits that are appearing in our digit cuts and therefore um, we can comfortably put our 6 there and 0 to give us 60 Therefore, we have used that and we have used that. So what digit do we need to use or uh, multiply 60 by to get uh, 240? You can see when you multiply this uh, 2 times 2 uh, gives us a 4. And therefore, we have our digit card 4 there. And 4 uh, multiplied by 60 gives us 240. Therefore, we need 6, 0 and 4 uh, digit cards to do the calculations correct question number five here is a number sequence here is a number sequence uh, it continues in the same way uh, complete the boxes we have a box in the beginning the box in the hand there right now uh, any sequence uh, has got the same uh, increment or um, uh, decrease between and to give a number so we find to want to find the um, difference between 12 and 3 to get to know the sequence so when you take 12 and you subtract 3 12 and then you subtract 3 right there you get 9 what about 21 um, we take away uh, 12 still gives us 9 uh, to confirm we do the last one uh, 30 take away uh, 21 this as well gives us 9 and we are now sure that to get our, um, um, to complete the first box, we need to get, uh, we take away some value from 3. So 3, uh, take away x, should give us 9. And um, in this case, uh, our x is going to be minus 9 plus 3 and therefore our x is going to be minus 6 so the value of this box should be minus 6 um, the next is the last box here and to fill the last box here we are going to take um, x uh, x minus 30 should give us 9 so what is going to be our x and therefore x is equals to you take 30 to the other side of the equal sign will be a 9 plus 30 and therefore our x will be 39 and therefore this box here the value will be 39 question number six here is a number line what is what number is shown in the arrow or what number is shown by the arrow right there uh, the arrow that is being referred to is uh, over there um, it's always good to know uh, what each of these divisions the number and uh, the number line represent uh, to do that you find the range between um, 560 and uh, 460 uh, symbol mathematics 560 take away 460 will give us uh, 100 and therefore we find how many divisions between 460 and uh, 560? 
and therefore this is uh, from 460 to this division that is 1 uh, we have 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 and 10 and therefore uh, to find each one of those divisions um, the value we take 100 divided by 10 of course this will give us uh, 10 and therefore we know that from four, uh, 460 the next value will be 470 plus uh, that is 460 plus 10 give us 470 this will be 480 be 490 before of uh, this will be 500 sorry this is 510 this is 520 this is 530 this is 540 and this is 550 and therefore we can see our error here is between our uh, 500 and 510 and therefore this position here should be 505 so the arrow uh, is at 505. Number 7. Lily has some cards showing digits and operations. We have um, our 5 cards uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Our 3 cards have got digits and so the last 2 cards have got operation, multiplication and division. Uh, she uses these cards to make a calculation. Uh, you can see that uh, she takes card uh, um, digit 4, you multiply by 6, uh, what you get is 24. Our uh, question is, use the cards to make three uh, different calculations. Three uh, different calculations. Therefore, you um, can take uh, the first card as uh, 2, 4, and when I divide by uh, 6, of course I'm going to get 4. All right you can use another um can use another uh, card of course you can take six um multiplied by four i'm going to get 24. You can also take um another uh two other cards you can take um uh, 24 and I divide by uh, 4. When I do that, I divide by 4, sorry. Divide by 4. When I do that, I'm going to get uh, 6. Those are three uh, different calculations. Number 8. Rajiv has 84 marbles. Majid has 68 marbles. Rajiv gives some of his marbles to Majid. So that they each have the same number of marbles. Each have the same number of marbles. How many marbles does Rajiv give to Majid? Now to find, uh, to solve this question, first find uh, the difference in marbles. How many marbles does Rajiv have uh, more than Majid? Difference in marbles. Right, and to do that, you take uh, Rajiv's marbles, which are 84. You take away um, Rajiv's marbles, which are 68. Uh, this will give you uh, 16. And therefore, if they share these 16 marbles equally, okay, will what will um, be uh, the answer here? Will be eight. So assuming <coughs> um, Rajiv gave eight marbles to uh, Majid. Uh, how many marbles will uh, Rajiv be Avi remaining? Um, so let Rajiv give eight marbles to um, Rajiv give eight marbles to Majid. So eight uh, four take away eight marbles. This will be uh, 76 marbles. So Rajiv will be Avi 76 marbles remaining. What about if um, Raji, um, Majid, sorry, uh, receives the eight marbles that has been given by uh, Rajiv. How many marbles will be will he be having? And therefore, uh, sixty-eight. You add eight. This will be seven, seven, seventy-six. Therefore, you can see when um, Rajiv gives eight marbles, I uh, remains with seventy-six marbles. When uh, Majid receives 
eight marbles from Rajiv is now got 76 marbles. And therefore, how many marbles does Rajiv give to Majid? And the answer is eight. Number nine. Mike says, I am thinking of a four digit number. Four digit number. See on one, two, three, four. Four digit number. Uh, Mike is thinking about that. And um, the number, the hundred, hundreds uh, digit is two. So let's plus, sorry. Uh, uh, yeah, that's correct. Uh, that is the hundredth. This is the thousands, hundredths, tenths, and units. And um, that is two. And um, the hundredth digit is double the units digit so uh, two uh, is twice the unit digit and therefore two divide by two that gives us one right there um, the thousands digit is two more than the tens uh, digit uh, thousands here is two uh, more than the tens digit right here and therefore all the four digits total 15. Therefore, we have already three digits here. Yeah? We have uh, two plus one. This gives us uh, a three. And therefore, uh, what is the difference? We already have got three. So the total should be 15. So 15 take away three. This should give us uh, 12. So we find two digits. When we add them up, we are to get uh, a sum of 12. And therefore, I'll choose um, some digits here, and uh, I'll start with uh, 10 plus 2. This gives us 12. Uh, but you can see uh, clearly uh, from this statement here, um, the thousands digit is more than is two more than the tens digit, and therefore when you compare two and ten, uh, ten is eight more than two, so that cannot be right. Uh, we go to the next one, nine plus three. 9 plus 3 gives us 12. You can see um, 9 is 6 times uh, 3, and therefore that cannot be correct. Go to the next one, 8 plus uh, 4. Uh, 8 plus 4 gives us uh, 12. You can see 8 is 4 times uh, 4. That cannot be the answer. So uh, 7 plus 5, uh, this gives us as well 12. And you can see that... Um, 7 is 2 uh, greater than 5. And therefore, uh, that should be our answer. That is, the, the thousand digit is 7, and the tens digit is 5. And therefore, uh, the number which Mike is thinking of is 7, uh, 2, sorry, 7, uh, 2, Five, one. Number 10. Here is a picture of a signpost at, is a picture of signpost at uh, Chanwell. So this signpost is at Chanwell. Aston travels from Aston to Chanwell uh, to Brandwell. How far does he travel? So Aston is traveling from Aston Traveling from Aston to Chawel. Then from Chawel, he proceeds to uh, Brantwell. Now, the distance from Chanwell to Aston is 128 kilometers. The distance right here is uh, 128 kilometers and the distance from Chanwell to Brandwell is around 49 km and therefore uh, the distance that uh, Hassan travels from Aston to Brandwell uh, is the sum of these two so 128 plus 49 this will give us uh, 177 km so Hassan has traveled a distance of 177 kilometers from Aston to Brandwell. Number 11. Draw an arrow 
um, this kind of arrow to show the position of 4 more than minus 5. Therefore, it is 4 more, uh, minus um, 4 more than minus 5. You are moving to the right of the number line. So you count um, steps from um, minus 5, 4 steps. 1, 2, 3, 4. Therefore, um, the arrow should be uh, drawn right there. Number 12. Work out, work out a double 7.8. Double means um, either you multiply by 2 or you add 7.8 two times. So let me add 7.8 plus 7.8, this will give me 15.6, can do this, therefore double 7.8 is 15.6, um, 12b, half of 9.65, uh, half of 9.65, therefore to get a half you divide by 2, uh, you can do the long, multiply, uh, long division, 9.6 uh, divide by 2, this will give you 4, 4 will give you 8 right there, minus, uh, we get 1.6, therefore, what do we get um, to divide 1.6 by 2, uh, we get 8, so 8 uh, multiplied by 2, you get 1.6, therefore, um, half of 9.6 is 4.8. Number 13, complete the boxes to show uh, the digits in this number to show what the digits in this number represent. Of course, the number is 27.45. Um, of course, um, you know, we have these places um, right there. And therefore, uh, the place right here, this is, we know this is tenths. For 2 here is tens. Uh, for 7 here is units. We will be given it right uh, right there. Uh, 4 here is tenths. This is tenths. And then for 5 here is hundredths. This is hundredths. Hundredths. Therefore, um, the answer to our question right here is 4 is tenths. Tenths. Uh, two is tens. Tens, and then five is hundredths. Five is hundredths. Number fourteen. Oliver takes fourteen hours, thirty-two minutes to travel from Ayrton to Plumpton by train. He lives at uh, 05 uh, 45. What time does he arrive at uh, Platon? Therefore the journey takes 14 hours uh, 3, uh, 14 hours at 2 minutes and he lives at um, um, 05 45. So to get the time he arrives at Platon um, you basically just do addition. Uh, you take um, 14 hours that it takes, uh, 32 minutes, you add to the time he left, which is uh, 05, uh, 45, and uh, you get 7, uh, 1 here, uh, 37, uh, so um, 60 uh, goes to uh, this other side, and therefore you get uh, 4 plus 5 plus 1 gives us 10. Uh, gives us 10, and therefore this will be 20. So he arrives at um, Plumpton as 20, 17. Number 15. Three quarters, three over four over number is 24. What is uh, the number? Okay, um, so three over four over number is 24. 
all of a number um, in this context is 4 over 4. So 4 over 4 is what? Of course you do cross multiply and then for what you get here is um, 24 times 4 over 4 divided by 3 quarters. Of course 4 divided by 4 will give us 1. Therefore this will be 24 times 1 divided by 3 quarters. Uh, this will uh, get to 24 times 4 divided by 3 uh, which will give us, when you do the math correctly, you get um, 32. Therefore 32 is the correct answer. Number 16. A number is divisible by 8 if the number formed by the last three digits is divisible by 8. Okay? Use this rule to show that 82,306 is not, is not divisible by 8. So we take the last uh, three numbers, which is 308, and we test by dividing by 8. And if it is divisible by 8, then the whole number is divisible by 8. If it's not, then it isn't divisible by 8. So 306 um, we divide this one by 8. When you divide by 8, you get 38.25. Of course, I'm using my calculator. And therefore, this number is not divisible by 8 because it is giving us a decimal point right there. And therefore, um, uh, so um, 306 is not divisible by 8. Therefore, uh, the number 82306 is also not divisible by 8. We have shown. Number 17. Here are three uh, probabilities. Uh, that is, here are three probability statements. We have A, we have B, we have C. Um, write the letter for each statement in the correct place in the probability scale. Because uh, the probability scale starts from no chance to certain. No chance basically means uh, no, not possible to occur. Uh, certain means probability of uh, occurring is 1. Therefore, uh, we have poor chance, even chance, and good chance. Uh, let's look at A. When I throw a coin, when I throw a fair coin, it will land on ads. A coin has got two sides. Therefore, it can either land on ads or on the tail. And therefore, um, that will be an even chance. So we write A. Uh, a right there. Um, that is done. Um, let's go to B. Let's go to B. Somebody will have a birthday on 30th November. What is the probability of that happening? Of course, we know that um, uh, Feb uh, February has only either 28 days or 29 days. It doesn't have uh, 30 days. And therefore, probability of, uh, of somebody having a birthday on 30th Feb will be zero. Therefore, no chance for B. Then we go to C. I will be order tomorrow. Of course, that is certainty. That is, the probability of that happening is one. Therefore, uh, C is right there at certain. Number 18. Draw a ring around two numbers, which in the grid that add up to 10. Okay, the grid is this table here. So um, you choose two numbers. When you add them up, when you sum them up, you are supposed to uh, get 10. I'll choose 4.4 uh, and 5.6. 
when I add these two, I'll get 10. So I'm supposed to draw a ring. So I draw a ring around that number and this other number right here. And that's not the only numbers that add up to, uh, to 10. I can also uh, see and um, uh, notice that also if you add 3.8, uh, this one here, and this 6.2 right here, 6.2, when you sum them up, you still get a 10. So I can also draw another ring around these two. But you don't have to draw uh, rings um, on four uh, numbers. You can only draw rings on two numbers. The instruction is on two numbers. I was just showing you, you can draw um, rings on uh, the other numbers. Uh, question number 19. Calculate uh, 2.3 plus 6.78. Uh, calculation is basically addition uh, right there. So um going to to add these two, you have to add the correct place uh place orders. So I'm going to have uh 6.78 right there, and I'm going to add uh to 2.3. Uh so you can see uh 2.3 has got only one decimal place and 6.78 has got two decimal places. So here I'll have eight, then uh, 3 plus 7, this gives us um, 10, so I carry 1, uh, 0 there, so 6 plus 2 plus 1 will give us 9. So uh, the answer is 9.008. Number 20, for each number in the table, for each number in the table, uh, write a factor that is between 4 and 5 factors. So you need to factorize these numbers to get the factors that are between 4 and 10. Uh, let's start with uh, 45. What are factors of 45? So 45, we can divide by 3 to get uh, 15. And uh, 15, we can divide by 3 to get 5. So, of course, um factors of 45 are 3 um, and 5 but you can also multiply these two 3 here uh, to get this 3 and this 3 uh, to get 9 so 3 times 3 get 9 so 9 is also another factor of uh, 45 and it is 3 is not between uh, 3 is less than 4, so it's not between 4 and 10. So the factors that of 45 that are between 4 and 10 are 5 or 9. Okay, um, next, um, factors of 49. There are only two uh, numbers which when you multiply you get 49. And that would be 7 and uh, 7. So factors of 49 is only 7. And um, uh, for the next one, uh, 54, factors of 54, um, get 54 here, divide by 2, uh, you get um, 27. Okay, uh, 27 um, divide by, what number do you divide by to get... Um, uh, 7, you divide by 3, and you divide by 3, what do you get? Um, 27 divided by 3. Um, give us 9. And um, uh, you can see uh, 3 is less than 4, and 2 is less than uh, 4. Uh, but you can multiply 2 and uh, 3 to get 6, right? So 6 is greater than 4 and is between 10 and 9, 10, uh, 4 and uh, uh, 10. So factors of 54 between 4 and 6, 4 and 10 would be either 6 or 9. Number 21. Here is an irregular shape drawn on a grid of squares 
estimate the area of the square. Now to estimate, um, we are not going, we are not supposed to, we are not asked to get the correct area, we are only asked to uh, do an estimation here. And therefore to estimate, um, we are going to join up, uh, we will join uh, the up, the incomplete, join up, we will count the complete squares and join up uh, the incomplete, uh, the incomplete squares the incomplete squares to make all squares, uh, squares, complete squares to make up, to make full squares, full squares. Now we have full squares here. We have one, two, three, four, five, six. Those are full squares, all right? Now, the rest are not full squares, so we are supposed to join up um, at least a few. So I can join up this and this to give us um, seven. I can also join up um, this, and this will fit here to give us uh, eight. I uh, will also join up um, uh, <clears throat> um, this and this. This will join up here with these others to give us, um, um, no, that one cannot uh, give us, so let's call this one a half. So we have eight and a half uh, squares, and therefore that will be our area. 8.5 will be our area. Number 22. <clears throat> Bless see us some identical squares. A square has got same sides, so if this, is, this side is 6 centimeters, also this side over here uh, is also 6 centimeters, uh, right there. She uses three of the square's uh, tiles to make a rectangle, of course three of them, of course not, don't, no, not drawn to scale. What is the area of this triangle? Of course, uh, we can find the area of one square, area of one uh, square. And area of one square is um, 6 times 6, which gives us three, uh, 36 centimeters squared. Don't forget the unit is squared. And therefore, um, there are three squares, 1, 2, 3. So if one square is 36 and they are all equivalent, then uh, 36 times 3 should give us the area of the rectangle, which is 108 centimeter squared. So the area of the rectangle is zero uh one eight zero I mean sorry one zero eight uh centimeters number twenty three <clears throat> complete the table to show uh equivalent uh measurements um the first one has been done for you uh that is one point two four meters is equals to one twenty four centimeters of course you know that one meter is equals to 100 centimeters. Therefore, you're converting that. Uh, the second one, we need to convert kilograms into grams. And therefore, we know that one kilogram is equivalent to 1,000 grams. And therefore, here we have 3.165 kilograms. And therefore, to change that into kilograms, we multiply by 1,000. So we have um, 3.165 times a thousand, uh, this should give us uh, 3165 grams. And that is what we write here, 3165 uh, grams. <clears throat> we have 4.2 liters, we're supposed to write the equivalent of that in millimeters, and we know that one liter, one liter is equivalent to 1000 milliliters. Therefore, um, we know, uh, we're going to take 4.2 liters times 1,000, and this should give us um, 4,200 milliliters. That's what we write here, 4,200. Then, of course, uh, we're going to convert or to write equivalent of um, 273 millimeter, millimeter, milliliter, millimeters to centimeters. Uh, likewise, we know that one centimeter 
is equivalent to 10 uh, millimeters equivalent to 10 millimeters and therefore um, this case we to convert to centimeters we divide so 273 divide by 10 uh, this will give us 27.3 uh, centimeters that's what we write over here 27.3 Number 24, <clears throat> here is a bag of uh, 100 coins, we have 100 coins in the bag, and the mass of one coin, the mass of each coin is 2.268 grams, and um, the question is, what is the mass of the 100 coins? Of course, um, to get the mass of the 100 coins, uh, we add um, the mass of each coin. Uh, the easiest is to get uh, the mass of one coin, 2.268, and we multiply by the 100 coins that we have in the bag. When we do that, uh, we'll get uh, 226.8 uh, grams. Grams, and therefore uh, the mass of the 100 coins in the bag is 226.8 uh, grams. Number 25. Find the range of these numbers. Find the range. Uh, range is the difference between the largest and the smallest number. So uh, you identify the largest number. The largest number here is 60 and the smallest number is 5. So we find the difference. Find the difference. between 60 and 5, the smallest and the largest. Therefore, uh, 60, difference is subtraction or minus uh, 5 will give us uh, 5, 5. So the range is 55. Number 26. Here is one side of a rectangle on a coordinate grid, right, you can see the grid right there, um, a third vertex of the rectangle is at 3, point, uh, three coordinates 3, 1, um, <clears throat> find coordinates 3, 1, coordinates 3, 1 is uh, right here, so this is 3, 1, We are told to plot the point 3, 1 on the grid, uh, which we have done uh, right there. And um, we are asked what are the coordinates of the fourth vertex, that is part B. Uh, what are the coordinates of the fourth vertex of the rectangle? Of course, uh, to do that, you need to join, um, you need to join this vertex, because uh, to join that, you need to draw a line from there, from 4, 0, 1 to um, 3, 1 coordinates. Of course, coordinates always start with the uh, X and Y coordinates. And to locate um, the third, uh, the fourth coordinates, we are supposed to draw a parallel line to either of the sides of the rectangle. And I'll draw right here. Um, I draw from right there to uh, right there to right there. Then I'll join these two. That seems to be a good triangle. And therefore, um, the coordinates of my triangle is. The x coordinate here is minus 2, the y coordinate is minus 4, uh, right there. So, if I may draw, I may come down to b. So, the coordinates of the fourth vertex will be minus 2 and minus 4. Number 27. Here are some uh, number facts. Um, multiplying 
1 times 17 gives us 17, 2 times 17 gives us 34, 4 times 17 gives us 68, 8 times 17 gives us 136. You can notice that we are multiplying all these numbers by 17. Use these facts to calculate um, 13 times 17. You must show uh, you must show the answer and how you worked it out. Now to do this, um, we want to find which of these numbers can we add up to get 13. And therefore, uh, to get 13, I will add 8 plus 4 will give us 12 plus 1 will give us 13. Therefore, uh, we need to get whatever um, products we multiply 8 times uh, 17, we'll get 136 right here. Um, 4 times 17, we get 68 right here. And 1 times 17 will give us 17. Just like we have uh, added uh, 8 plus 4 plus 1 to get 13. Uh, we also add their products by with 17. So 136 plus 68 plus 17 will give us 221. Um, and therefore, and therefore, 13 times 17 will give us 2 to 1. And um, that should be our answer. 13 times 17 gives us 221. Number 28. A sequence starts at 4.5 and decreases uh, by two, uh, 0 0.25 each time. And of course, uh, starting from 4.5, decreasing by 2 each time, uh, 0 0.25 each time gives us uh, the first five um, terms of the sequence. Uh, part A, write down a term in the sequence that is between 1 and 0. To do that, you continue the sequence. The sequence stopped at 3.5. So 3.5 minus 2 point, uh, 0 0.25, uh, this will give us uh, 3.25 uh, minus 2, 0.25, this will give us 3.00 minus is decreasing by 0 0.25. So the next sequence will be 2.75. The next sequence will be 2.5. The next sequence will be the next term will be 2.25 uh, followed by 2.00 followed by 1.75. 75 followed by uh, 1.5 followed by term 1.25 and um, we get to 1 uh, from 1 uh, 1 minus uh, 0 0.25 will give us 1.75 uh, 0 0.75 sorry 0 0.75 um, right there 0 0.75 uh, 0 0.75 minus 0 0.25 uh, will give us 0 0.50 and of course you minus that you get 0 0.25 and uh, get 0. So the terms that are between uh, the terms of the sequence uh, that are between uh, 1 and 0 um, this 0 0.75 0 0.50 and 0 0.25. Those terms are. So choose one term of the three. Uh, write down a term in the sequence. So I'll go for 0 0.50. 0. Part B. Write down the first negative number in the sequence. So you continue the sequence. Uh, so it will be uh, 0 minus 0 0.25 and when you minus uh, you're going to get 0 point my negative 0 0.25 and that is the first term so to get the first negative term uh, so the answer is minus or no negative uh, 0 
to 5. Number 29. Gabriela travels to Denmark. The graph shows how many Danish crown she gets for her American dollars. Uh, right there we have a conversion uh, graph uh, from Danish um, from Danish crown to American dollar. Uh, our question is um, how many crowns does Gabriela get for $20? Uh, um, how many? And um, in this case, I will want to find how many dollars. Um, she had twenty dollars, but the graph is up to fifteen dollars. You can see. Uh, so I will prefer to take half of twenty. Uh, twenty divided by two gives us ten. So if I get how many Danish crowns uh, equivalent to ten dollars, I will multiply that by two to get how many uh, Danish crown. Uh, for twenty dollars, so um, I'll use my graph. I will um, uh, come right here, and uh, I will uh, start from. Uh, I'll start from ten dollars here. I'll go. Uh, I'll go up to the graph. Ten dollars. I'll draw a line from ten dollars. Let me use a. Uh, different color here. I'll draw 10 to the graph, $10 to the graph right there. And then come from the graph to the side here. So I can see from that um, $10 is equivalent to 65 crowns. And so um, I'll go um, $10 is equivalent to uh, 65 crowns and therefore uh, 20 dollars will be twice that will be equivalent to 65 times 2 uh, which will give me 130 danish uh, crowns so gabriella gets 130 uh, danish crowns uh, for our 20 uh, for our 20 uh, American dollars. So the answer is 130. Uh, number 30. Anastasia buys six oranges. She buys six oranges right there. And she pays with a $10 note. She receives a change of $7.36. Uh, what is the cost of one orange? Uh, show you're working. Uh, that's important. Uh, so let's find the much uh, Gabriel Anastasia has spent, and um, uh, we'll go on ten dollars. Uh, take away the change that Anastasia got seven point three six. Uh, so Gabriela, the difference here is two point six four. So Gabriela, sorry, Anastasia spent uh, two point six four dollars. Uh, so six oranges, six oranges costs, uh, six oranges cost um, $2.64. So what would be the uh, cost for one orange? Um, one orange, one orange, one orange, um, Anastasia must have paid how much? So one orange will be the much she spent, $2.64, divided by uh, 6. Uh, $2.64 uh, divided by 6 oranges. This will give us 0 0.44. So um, Anastasia spent uh, 0 0.44 cents uh, for each orange she bought. Um, zero point, zero point, sorry, um, this is a, a zero point four pounds, uh, dollars, uh, zero point four dollars is equivalent to, uh, 44 cents.
So Anastasia spent 44 cents per, per um, orange. Uh, lastly, number 31, uh, Chen says one third is equal to 0 0.3. Is he correct? Um, one third. Um, so if you take one divided by three, this will give you 0 0.333 uh, recurring. So it's obvious that one third is not equal is not equal to uh, 0 0.3. So um, the answer is no. And of course, uh, you can explain this by uh, say that uh, uh, 0 0.3 is equivalent to 3 over 10 if you change it to decimal and 3 over 10 is not 3 over 10 is not equal to 1 third that's it guys um this is uh the last question is great uh, that you are watching this video but remember, practice makes perfect. I encourage you to practice working out uh, these questions yourself uh, as I have given you a guideline. You may get this same paper I am solving right now uh, from solved uh, papers from solvedpapers.co.uk um, Check uh, checkpoint tab uh, primary you'll get uh, this uh, same paper and all the videos in these channels offer clear step-by-step -step, uh, solved examination questions to help boost the confidence of um, our learner I welcome you to join me at um, my online classes I've got online classes at uh, a space SP Academy SP Academy uh, SP um, Academy dot co dot uk I guarantee you will um, I guarantee you uh, you will discover a great opportunity of getting outstanding grades thank you for watching and bye